absolutely stunning day. So, um, spring rain on still waters um, was going to be a meditation and reflection retreat based on the traditional teaching of the five skandhas. Um, the five skandhas can uh, sometimes appear to be a rather academic or technical list and it's not always very obvious um, how this list can be used to practically speaking in the day-to-day -day life of a, of a Buddhist. Um, so uh, this retreat was designed to take an experiential approach to the material. The retreat was um, originally uh, advertised for people who are already practicing within the True Activist community uh, and who have a regular meditation practice. Um, so uh, something of this background will be assumed in these videos. Um, because obviously we're not able to run the retreat, what I'm going to do is a, a series of, of videos, a series of short videos throughout the week that we would have had the retreat on. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll run those together, I'll compile those into a, a longer video at the end which we can post on the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so here we would have been at Dharmakosha on this absolutely beautiful April day. So the approach we're going to be taking is essentially quite practical. Um, we will be exploring the, uh, the language and the terminology of the five skandhas, enough to get a, a sense of or a feeling for um, what that language and that terminology is pointing to. Um, and then we're going to be looking at how we can explore that in our experience. Um, this very important aspect of the retreat is uh, I'm going to try not to be overly technical and to always be pointing to um, how we experience the five skandhas, how they express in our experience. And then we can start to look more carefully, more reflectively and more meditatively, if you like, at the types of dynamic that, uh, that, that, that that exposes for us and the ways that we can use that to reflect uh, in ways that support or um, encourage a kind of loosening of the mind, uh, a kind of opening. Um, now the Buddha's teaching, of course, the, uh, the, the Buddha's project is uh, the end of suffering and that's what the Buddha's aiming to, uh, to achieve. So all the time when we look at the five skandhas, it's important to bear that in mind. Um, we're, uh, um, so particularly on this retreat, I'm not going to be approaching it in terms of an analytical, um, uh, academic understanding of the material. Um, I'm going to be looking more at yeah, it, it from an experiential point of view. So on a retreat, of course, we're normally spending quite a lot of time in the shrine room and spending time quietly and carefully in each other's company. Whereas now I'm just sending you videos, so hopefully you'll get something of a reflective sense from your time at home, and uh, you know we'll be able to use the material next time opportunity arises for you. The inspiration for the title, um, Spring Rain on Still Waters, uh, came from partly my own experience of meditating outdoors and um, feeling the rain and watching the rain fall on the water. And uh, also in the Pena Sutta, in the Samyutta Nikaya, it is one of the images that the Buddha uses when talking about, um, talking about Vedana in the context of the five skandhas. Um, I, actually talks about autumn rain but we were doing the retreat in April so I thought the season probably wasn't crucial to the simile. The five skandhas themselves of course as well as being um, referred to frequently in the Pali Canon in the sort of earliest tier of Buddhism are referred to uh, throughout the Buddhist tradition. Um, in Tri Ratna we come across the most in the Heart Sutra which is why I'm using the skandhas. I'm generally using the Sanskrit, even though a lot of the material that I'm talking about will have been, will have been drawn from the Pali, where in the Pali we talk about uh, the khandhas. Um, but uh, they're the same word, really, so we'll, uh, we'll stick with the Sanskrit because that's what's most familiar to people in Sri right now.
And again, it's worth bearing in mind that um, there are sort of nuances and differences in the way these, uh, these, these words are talked about, the way the skandhas are talked about in different elements and aspects of the tradition. So, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to be taking what I hope is an essentially practical approach. Uh, and where I do look at different ways of understanding words or understanding reflection, um, it's largely because I feel that the, uh, the variety adds something or points to a type of experience. Um, so this word skanda itself is usually translated as group or aggregate or heap. Um, and um, the five skandhas, uh, the five skandhas are rupa, uh, usually translated as form, uh, vedna, usually translated as feeling, samnya, usually translated as perception, um, samskara, which is a kind of complicated word in, uh, in, in Buddhism, um, variably translated as formations quite often. Uh, often in this context it's used, um, uh, people talk about volition, and um, I'll say a bit more about how that relates later on. Uh, and vijnana, which is uh, usually translated as consciousness. Um, it is quite important to remember that um, this isn't a sort of Buddhist metaphysics. Um, this is a, a group of uh, ways of looking at experience. Um, if you start treating this like you might treat um, uh, sort of going to electron chemistry and hearing about the, the sort of elemental composition of, of material things, um, it, it doesn't really work. Um, it's, a, it's a sort of classification structure to help us look at the totality of our experience. Um, when we're thinking in this way, when we're working in this way, Everything, the five skandhas is everything, and everything is the five skandhas. Um, so we're not looking for a sort of atomized form, perception, uh, volition within our experience. Um, but neither do we need to get too hung up on trying to sort of um, make everything fit the system. I think it's quite important when we get on to reflecting on the material um, that you start off by understanding the uh, what's meant by this this language as it presents in its kind of more obvious forms um, as you sort of start to look more deeply into experience the interweaving and interacting of those forms will become more apparent um, so when things pop up and you think well that isn't on the list is it um, just sort of hold that thought and see where we go with that because the the list is designed to be complete um, there's a number of these complete lists in Buddhism and I think they're interesting, they're designed to point us around our experience. A very familiar one in Tri Ratna of course is the six elements. The six elements is also a complete list. It includes the material elements and then space and uh, consciousness. And the, uh, the senses, the six senses, again you've got the five physical senses and, and the mind sense, again consciousness brought in. So these lists, they're complete lists and they enable us to look at our experience quite systematically, um, but also with a sense of curiosity and interest and looking at how they interrelate and interact with each other. So sometimes when people talk about the five skandhas, they think that they only describe the unenlightened mind. That somehow the absence of the five skandhas is what um, connotates the awakened mind, the enlightened mind, the mind of the Buddha. That's not the, uh, the way the teaching is presented in, in early Buddhism. Uh, the Buddha talks about the five skandhas of clinging, upadana kanda, yeah, panch upadana kanda, the five skandhas of clinging. So the issue is the way we attach to or associate with or identify with or form our world out of the experience of the five skandhas. And um, the Buddha of course is, uh, is free from clinging, Upadana clinging is free from clinging and he, um, uh, he still experiences the five skandhas. Um, he still has that full range of human experience that the rest of us have. But because he's not attached to that experience, because he's not holding to it, and making more of it than it really is, he experiences a freedom from suffering. That, of course, is the uh, 
about where we're going with this. That's what the Buddha is trying to point us to. Uh, an experience whereby we are free from suffering. So the important point here is we're not trying to deny our experience. What we're doing is we're looking more carefully at it and more openly at it with a very relaxed and curious mind. 